in terms of what's okay from a biosecurity point of view. Right. So I, I think there's always that's, like considerations. There's always going to be that. Yeah. Bring to mind straight away that are there that nowadays nothing nothing simple. No, it's not. And so I think that was that was one of the the lower level drivers along with the kind of the fans' point of view of would people be willing to come back? Would the situation really allow it? I mean, we don't know what point we'll be in by the time we get to that autumn competition. I think the costs just as they were, they were too big a risk from what I understand from the the email that was sent out to all members and staff on uh, Wednesday morning. So I'm I'm not surprised. In some, I I kind of thought this would be the case. I was sort of surprised that there was that talk we might might be involved, but it does mean, uh, yeah, that's that's it for my season. So shortest season I've had it had in a while, two games. So, uh, but hopefully things will be in a place where we can be back in in January, February, raring to go. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, pretty much half the teams are ruled out of the uh, autumn competition, but Bradford have confirmed their intentions to enter the RFL's proposed autumn competition. The announcement breaks the trend of most of the clubs who we've heard from so far who stated their intention not to take part and, and Batley we heard from at the weekend who were one foot in one foot out at the moment um, with the majority uh, citing issues around finance and player safety in confirming their plans the Bulls said that the decision has been taken with the priority for staff player and supporter safety paramount their statement said we have secured the re- required regular testing for the players and coaching staff through the local health authority this has been agreed up to which health authority though Bradford or Dewsbury um, have agreed to the RFL's requirements we are obviously aware of the situation within Bradford and Kirklees and we'll watch events closely whether it be possible for crowds to attend matches and we've entered the tournament on the basis that it will be possible to at least start with crowds. We await further updates for the RFL following closure of entries on the 14th of August. So obviously talking about the present situation in areas of the north of the of the country in the UK for those overseas listeners or those who haven't been sort of switched onto the news, Greater Manchester um Kirklees and Calderdale and, and Bradford areas of West Yorkshire as well have all been placed under um, tighter lockdown restrictions than the loosening of the lockdown that we'd seen across the rest of the country, um, which effectively doesn't doesn't impact the club's day to day operations, um, but it does mean that the players will be under stricter resident uh, strict, stricter rules in their private re- residencies. Um, which which makes life a bit more difficult and complicated. But also, if those things are being introduced because of rising numbers, the it does throw cast some shadow of doubt over how soon we'll be able to do things like let people into stadiums uh, in those areas as well. So it, it is something that needs to be kept an eye on that might actually cause an issue with the planned bringing crowds in from October. I certainly think it's going to stifle any opportunity for those areas to be test um test venues for stuff in the, in the uh, for getting crowds into sporting events in the near future um so it'll be interesting to see how that all develops but at least it's positive that there's a that there's a club that's come forward and apparently there's three or four others waiting to confirm as well and you'd expect Dewsbury will be one of them because they're owned by the same people uh, Batley apparently also apparently Batley and Dewsbury have been working together so yeah so I'd imagine yeah I think they, the, the RFL has stated they need eight clubs as a minimum to make it viable so it won't go ahead unless they get eight clubs so That's right, yeah. if you if you assume you've got Bradford Batley Dewsbury Featherstone as a, as, as a, a minimum and then I imagine Lee will jump in as well yeah and you'd, you'd I think London and Toulouse wouldn't want to miss out on an opportunity to demonstrate their potential. Yeah, yeah. I think is probably another kind of situation, especially if the main other main runners and riders in that are kind of uh, in in the competition. So I suppose it then leaves um, the West Wales Raiders. Yeah, the Welsh sides to because they 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 said they were really keen at one point, which is. Interesting, because if they were getting flogged fifty odd nil in in League One, you wait till some of those sides get to them. That could be entertaining <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, well, we'll see. We, we'll see. There's there's still potential there for for getting that competition, and I think it'd be positive to have that competition. So hopefully we can get it. 
Yeah. All right, where are we? Testing news. Yes, this week in, uh, in coronavirus testing, and players that start for all 11 bet remaining Betfred Super League clubs and RFL match officials and support staff have now been tested at least three times ahead of the restart of the competition next weekend. From a total of 1,462 tests, none tested positive for COVID-19. All was good. And this week there were 400, sorry, 540 tests, 538 were negative, with the results of two being awaited only one of whom is a player and in the case of not one of the four clubs that played at the weekend so some yeah. postal uh, postal issues there yeah i'm not sure how that happens but um it's it's a positive isn't it that the testing continues to be fairly robust and positive outcome for this competition you know yeah i mean if you compare that with with football and and they were get they were getting positive tests in the first couple of um restarts i know i know for example brentford had a player um who tested positive and was isolated from the team and to be honest hasn't the same since from a football point of view so it's good that we are we have been able to return those negative tests yeah i mean even look at the formula one i mean how much i know that each team has a lot of people involved and, and that sort of stuff but really the com- the combatants in the in that there's a lot, lot less of them than across 11 Super League clubs, and um, and they've had positive tests as well. So, uh, so you know, it, it it does suggest that most of the players are taking this seriously as well, which is an important part of the compliance with this. Blake Austin had to take a break away from training with his teammates because he decided to go and watch the Liverpool, um, <laughs> the Liverpool title celebrations. It was reported in League Express, which uh, and, is, and is was one of stupid enough to post it on Instagram. Yeah, it wasn't that he did it. It was because I bet you there's other people that have done done things. It was that he was stupid enough to post it on Instagram. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So <laughs> hopefully things like that are a lesson to the players as well to sort of reinforce not to get complacent even though testing is going well um you know and a lot of the players live in areas now that are under greater restrictions uh, moving on to other sort of gen- general super league news they've struck an agreement with sky sports that will allow club season ticket holders exclusive access to live broadcasts involving their team the deals applies to matches held in august currently um, whilst games are being played behind closed doors eligible supporters will be able to watch the game via the rfl's r league platform either live or on demand um, Super League says that the clubs will be in contact with season ticket holders to provide details of how they can watch games. Now, I understand a few Leeds fans, including one of our sort of um, SLP family members, Dom Hodgson, had some difficulty getting the game up on, through their R League at the weekend. So um, be on top of that if you support any of the other clubs and you're waiting to get your th- sort of first taste at this. Make sure you get the details from your club. I, I don't believe all the clubs will have sent out the, the codes yet for their season ticket or mem- or season members or however they're distributing this out but if you do follow a Super League club make sure that the club has your current email address details so that they can give you your online access code to be able to watch these games on the R League app because you do have to have a special login um, to do it but I think it's even though there's been some hiccups which there is with every step forward on the r league say, um, and, and equally you know when we when we had the same with the, the football you know uh, when we got my one for the football that didn't work for the first game in, in the same way so i think they kind of have to judge the server capacity after the event unfortunately in these sorts of things so i think it's probably kind of inevitable that there might be teething issues with it because they've never done it before yeah and they open these things up but the companies that run these things won't be operating at full staffing levels either which is exactly. part of the issue but yeah hopefully it's um you know the two trial games i suppose in a way even though for the people who couldn't watch it won't feel that way but for the two games that have already been played it's given given insight to the super league to the and to the company behind the our league app to get this sorted out the other thing i suppose that's kind of linked to this is the cardboard crouch which we haven't put in the news rundown um but obviously they were released as well now and uh, people have started to get their faces in the stadiums um not that we could see them really very no, well they put them in they put them miles away 
yeah, I guess they prioritised they prioritised some sort of you know commercial angle, haven't they? And also charity uh, angle with with the with the positioning of the teams, like logos and sponsorship stuff, and some of the main part principal partners of the Super League as well getting more prominence. Um, and then the, the the cardboard cutouts above. So you're just relying on Sky to do a couple of cutaways every game to to give yourself a chance of of seeing it. But it is a key thing that's raising money for the clubs in Super League. So everyone who's who's bought one um, might be slightly disappointed. I think with not better able to see the people. It's more like the the way they've been done in the football than the way they've been done in the NRL, isn't it? Let's face it. Um, however still you're still showing support for your club um by, by buying them so i think there's a there's a there's a there's two sides to that one but a little bit disappointing that we they're not in greater prominence maybe yeah you've got one i've got one yep so um yeah you, you know go if they do do a cutaway see if you can spot us i should be spottable because of the hat i'm wearing is the uh is the giveaway i went with <laughs> i haven't spotted yeah. yours yet I, I'm at Headingley because that's where the KR fans seem to have ended up. Oh, all of them there, um, yeah. Yeah. They'll be moved to and... St. Helens, so hopefully everyone who's at the back at the moment might get a chance at the front at St. Helens, as it were, but you're still kind of halfway back. <laughs> I got one here. I've had a few. I've had, well, I'm on to four of them now. There's four of me around the world. Yeah. So I've got one. Big, big in card. Yeah, I am. I've, yeah, very much so. Big in, big in, big in any medium. Um <laughs> I, I'm, I'm there. I'm down. I was down in Gosford um, watching Manly. That was my first one. Then I've got the Super League one. I went to um, Slough's playoff game in the football. Um, so uh, partly to cheer a friend of ours up who'd been going for a bit of a horrible time. A few of us got who's Slough and we. A few of us got them. Got them there doing some slightly interesting poses. <laughs> and um, we, they also got one for their their baby son, which was quite fun. And we've, I've also had one, although Brentford, they decided to, of course, they don't do like doing anything sensible in the same way as everybody else. So they decided to do it on a, on a mural. So it was yeah, on, a, on a, just I one flat banner. That, haven't they? I think Man United have done that as well. Yeah. So, but you can see me and it, there was the other night where, uh, as Thomas Frank, the manager has taken to clapping the, uh, the, the plastic fans, which I think is, is quite a good statement. It's, uh, he still claps the fans no matter what. So uh, he, he he walked right past me where I am the other night. It's, it's funny because I'm not that far away. I'm only about two blocks down from where my normal seat is, so it's quite quite easy to spot. Oh yeah, because you sit quite, quite low down, don't you, to the pitch? Yeah, yeah. So we well, I, I did, did at the old stadium. Cool. <laughs> it's finally had its last game, we think. <laughs> yeah. New, the new ground. I'm I'm in a very different position actually through a number of circumstances. Basically, they made all our in the equivalent position as uh, twice the price. So as much as I fancy paying a thousand pounds for a year for a ticket, didn't, wasn't quite going to get that one passed. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, we've ended up further back and, but all together, which is nice. So there's a, there's a group of eight of us, but um, yeah, so ended up there, but yeah, we are almost at eye level at the, uh, at the, at the old stadium as I have to call it now. So you'd be able to see yourself on the TV then will they be taking that to Wembley? Uh, I don't think that's gone to Wembley, but I do know the flags that we, what a lot of us bought and had put up around Griffin Park, are going to Wembley. Um, so my one says WWTCD, which is what would Tony Craig do, which I is mean, uh, named after on, a former. You're on a contemporary Super League podcast, not a '90s football podcast, so. Exactly, yeah, um, but and uh, but it also says push up Brentford because there used to be a guy who used to follow Brentford home and away, and any any Brentford fan from ten years ago plus would would know this guy. Nobody actually knows his name, but everybody knows him as push up Brentford man, and he would sit behind always. He would be behind you somewhere at an away ground, and all you would get is push up Brentford, push up Brentford, push up Brentford. <laughs> For ninety minutes, and it would, it would, it, and occasionally he'd intervene it with "keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight." It was like a parrot. Um, but and no one's actually tracked him down. To, no one really knows who he is. See, there used but to be this a guy, guy at Wigan behind me who, whose catchphrase was "rip his bastard head off." <laughs> 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 <A> bit different. <laughs> 
Yeah, so we we got, we got that on the flag, and that is going to go to Wembley. That is actually at Wembley now. 